What's up, everybody? Red Cloud Gamer here, bringing you the 11th episode of the NSX Gaming Podcast on this lovely, snowy February the 1st here in New York. Joining me, as always, my co-host, the one, the only, the Green Sween. Shout out to the world, Sween. Make sure they hear you. Hey, world, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you're such a dick. Oh. Uh, I know we uh we didn't do we didn't do last week. It, there really wasn't that much news, but we both got kind of busy and just didn't have time anyway. So uh, we're back today. Uh, we got a little bit to talk about, right? I was gonna say it's kind of better that we waited. Uh, we're kicking off a new month with a podcast, which I think is awesome. I don't think we've done that yet. I don't know. We did for like, New Year's, but oh yeah, but. I don't think we did it on New Year's Day, but anyway, uh, we kind of let the week go on. We did another week and we waited, it, and a lot of news developed since then, right? So, I mean... Yeah, good amount. I mean, if we did this last week, it would have been like three and a half minutes of me yelling at Xbox, and then depending on when we did it, I would have been like, oh, my bad, Xbox. I'm sorry. It would have just been... Basically, it would have been Call of Duty Mario and Pokemon again, but it's not that this time, is it? <laughs> Wait, we've got something other than that? Uh, we got a couple other <laughs> things, don't we? Uh, all right, so I guess we'll jump into what we've been playing lately, right? You want to take it away? Oh, yeah, man. Well, I've, I've been playing a bunch of games lately, not going to lie. Uh, we've had two weeks, so my horizons have expanded. Uh, but now that you're showing this in the background, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you did something a little special for me, didn't you, man? Yeah, I mean, you asked me for a new uh, a new picture for your, you know, your wall and your cover art and whatnot. So I know you're a big Snorlax guy. You said you wanted Snorlax and you eating pizza, playing video games. It's like a dream for me as a kid, and, uh, you know, to see this come to life, I really thought it was spectacular. I didn't see this whole uh, actual step-by-step -step of you doing this. I remember you sent me the outline for Snorlax and me, but uh, not the whole entire thing. But, you know, it came out yeah. spectacular, dude, and I appreciate it so much. I, well, mean, I mean, you see it just jumped. You're just finished in there. Uh, it's because I had to draw you separately because I couldn't do it so small on the screen. So I drew you in a separate picture and then just ported you over. Right. I remember you showed me that. And I remember you showed me me without the beard. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be an eight-year-old Pokemon trainer. Great. I mean, I'm not certain <laughs> that that's not what you are now. So That's true. That's true. You see, um, I started with I... just like a starry sky. Then I was like, no, nah, I'll just put a real picture of Pokemon in there. Yeah, I see that. Um, but... You know, anybody who really knows me and my gaming history knows uh, my favorite game all time is the Pokemon series. Um, and I mean, this is just something I dreamed of as, as a kid, you know, uh, having my own Snorlax and just chilling. And it just it, it brings it to reality. You know what I mean? Having the pizza. Yeah, the it came Pokey out pretty flute. good. I liked it. Snorlax has got the Pokemon edition switch. And yeah, Pokey Flute, Pokey Bong, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. I didn't notice playing <laughs> that game when I was a kid. That's a bong. That is definitely a bong. Yeah. Nintendo, that is not okay what you guys did there. I just want you to know. It is not okay, Nintendo. Yeah, because you know what? A lot of people are like, you know, that's cool. They added a Pokemon bong. Like, my friends that don't play Pokemon, I'm like, uh, dude, that's not a Pokemon bong. That is the Pokey Flute. All right. Uh, just switching so, over to a little Monster Hunter footage that we got uh, whenever I see yeah. you're on the screen now. So we were actually playing together at that point. Yeah. Um. So... You know, uh, one of the two game or one of the three games I'm really going to bring up that I've been playing is, of course, Monster Hunter World. Uh, you know, you said your New Year's resolution was to get me to play more Xbox games, and you're off to a great start on that. I'll give you that. Uh, yeah, well, so we did do a little, know, we did a little Monster, Monster Hunter, Hunter, and then because of that drawing, you agreed to play another game of my choosing. Right. Oh, I'm sure I'm going to get your opinions on that. Yeah, we're, we're definitely going to talk about that. Uh, you know, let's talk about Monster Hunter World first, because especially yeah, because we definitely. both had a little bit of experience. Um, I thought the game looked great. The fights were dope. Um, you know, even the cinematics, it looked like it had a great story going. Uh, I think me and you had a very, very similar problem, is that there's no tutorial, like no direct tutorial. I mean, they tell you how to move and attack, but as for around the town, your objectives, what you're following on the map, what you're doing, and how you can pair up with other people on certain quests, nothing's really clear. I feel like they made this for a veteran fan base that it's hard to introduce newer players to this. Uh, yeah, I mean, my thoughts pretty much exactly. Like, um, You know, I played this back when it came out. I want to say it was just a little over three years ago. We, we saw that on Twitter the other day, right? It was like the three-year anniversary. And yeah. um, I, I do feel like playing it again... You know, I didn't get that far into it the last time, 
so playing with you, like, I noticed that I, I had trouble finding out exactly how we got into a party together and seeing whether or not you were actually in the map with me. I remember one time, I think you launched on the, uh, the mission, but I didn't go with you, and it never popped up to give me the option to go with you. And I'm sure that if we play this a little more and put some real time into it, we will get the hang of it and whatnot. But, yeah, uh, because I I think the thing we didn't know, I'm not even sure, I didn't really look into it 100%, but I think our problem was is that if we're looking for a new location that we're going to discover, like a new map entirely, then we can't do that specific mission together. And I think that's what we were doing is we were trying to find the camp at uh, the forest or whatever we were going to. Well, for the and record, I think that's stupid. We should be able to play the entire game together. Uh, agreed. If, agreed if it's a multiplayer 100%. game, you shouldn't be picking when I can play with other people and when I can't. Right. Um, and I'm not sure if that's because it comes hand in hand with cinematics, but they always, I feel like there's a lot of games that just have that both players press A, it skips feature. If not, you watch it. So I, I don't know. I don't really understand that. Um, yeah. I mean, I played again, Destiny I, with my friends and I could sit there and watch the cinematics while someone else skipped it. It wasn't a problem. And I mean, I'm sure this is a game I could learn and get used to. I definitely want to do that before Monster Hunter Rise comes out because this was a fun experience. I just think this is made for the hardcore fans, which there's nothing wrong with that. I just wish they would have made it a little easier for people that are just getting into the game to really figure out how to play 100%. Yeah, I, I do feel like it could have used a better, like, hand-holding tutorial. And I know I normally don't like those, but, like, this is a pretty deep game. And you can get into some very serious gameplay mechanics quick without even knowing that you're doing them. So I think that it needed a little bit better tutorial for those of us like you and me that weren't into Monster Hunter before this. Right. And I mean the monster board and everything like that, but I can also invite you to my session. It was all just kind of a little bit of a mess, you know? Yeah, I, I think if I'm we sure... played it a few times, we'd get the hang of it. And, uh, oh, I, absolutely. I think on my next day off, I'll probably dive in for another hour or two and try to... Probably by the end of that, I'll be like, yeah, no, I know exactly what I'm doing. Right. Um, but I mean, yeah, that's really my impression of it. It's a good game. I want to try it more and I'm sure you're kind of the same way. I think we only did like the first two, three missions, right? Yeah. I, uh, I do yeah, want to say I've played this before on, uh, on a regular Xbox one. Um, I don't, I don't know right around the time it came out. I've played it on a one X and it was noticeably better than the regular Xbox one, even though it doesn't have a patch for the series X playing it on the series X. It saw massive gains. I mean, I was in missions 30, 40 seconds before you were. Uh, so the load times were great. The It plays, like, essentially with the favor uh, visuals mode, but playing just as smooth as the favor performance. Although I suck at it. You can see me with this stupid giant sword. I don't know why I picked <laughs> Cloud Strife Sword. Like, you know, I, just, I made myself uh, Geralt the Witcher, and I was like, yo, he can handle this big-ass sword. Fuck it. And uh, I was wrong. I was totally wrong. Yeah. I shouldn't have picked that sword. It was a bad decision. But I was like, yeah, I'm going to look yeah. really cool on the podcast with this footage. I don't. I look terrible. I'd rather tell you that someone else is playing. That's what I should have led with. I should have been like, no, no, no. This is my kids. This is my no, that's the green That's the green swing. And I'm the other guy with the sword and the shield. No, he's not doing much better either. So I'd just be like, no, I was just uh, recording it. You know? I disagree. I, did, uh, I know you can see I, I named my cat Mike Hates Me because I know that you can't yeah. stand cats. <laughs> i was like oh i can't oh, wait okay. for him to see this <laughs> i see that i thought that was a message for you just being funny but now i see because it's a cat you said that that's yeah. hilarious <laughs> uh. um so so yeah i mean that's you know we take him down right there that's one of the games i'm playing uh you know you showed the logo design so uh i agreed to play a game on xbox and i'm really happy that you picked a game that i was very curious about and we talked about and i also agreed uh best art direction with you i i mean i don't think i voted for it and what i thought was gonna win but i definitely agreed with it and didn't have any arguments but um it's ori in the blind forest and ori in will of the wisps also but obviously we're gonna start with the blind forest and right you know um i dove into game. it obviously i've been a little bit busy and you know i've been telling you i've been looking at new apartments and everything trying to get a nice little stream room going and everything like that but um i did get some time to play last night on the phone with you actually when i was playing and I mean, just, I, I think I played the Cried a little bit right in the beginning. I yeah, I definitely got through, I think, the first uh, two maps. I don't know, map or two. I, I think the first map's really, really short. It's kind of just like the introduction. And then you get through the combat map and doing all the actual combat. Yo, Yo that introduction, man. 
when when the I don't know what like Ori's mom bear creature dies. Oh man. Yeah, so, you know, and, and that the, the thing that stood out to me in this game the most, I mean, I, first of all, I do want to say the combat is spectacular. It's a unique system of combat, um, visual art-wise. I think art style truly is where this game really stands out. But just the emotion of uh, when Ori loses the mother, and you're yeah, walking it's, it's this perfectly slow. perfectly conveyed. You're walking slow, you're cl- struggling to climb up the tree, and it, it really captures the emotion of feeling weak and hopeless in that time of him losing his guardian or mother, his caretaker. And I mean, I'm just so excited to see what this game has to offer. You know, as I go further with the maps, I see new art styles. I, I get further in this story. And I, 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 the talent tree is really deep in that as well. I didn't know that it had a huge talent system going for it. Yeah, it, it's pretty big. I mean, it... Yeah. I played it when it first came out. I want to say 2015, maybe 16. Uh, I got it brand new. There was a lot of hype around the game before it dropped, and I played right through it. Like I want to say, second or third day it was out. I had finished my first playthrough, and it it was just, it's rare for a game to really just captivate me like that these days. You know, I'm normally too busy between work and the kids and whatnot, but that one just got my attention. And I couldn't put it down. I, I remember going to work and just being like, "Damn, I can't wait to get out and go home and play some more Ori." And it yeah, really was, like, a perfect tonight. culmination of every aspect of the game. Like, is it the, the most ambitious project ever made? No. But everything it does, it does to perfection. The visuals are incredible. The gameplay is subl- uh, superb. Man, I'm messing up my words. Uh, sublime. Sublime. That's what I went to go with. Yeah. Um, the Like you said, the, the skill system, like... I didn't know there was a skill system when I first saw the the previews for it. I thought it was kind of just uh, like another Story game we're going right? to talk about, Dead Cells, where it's mostly just running through and kind of killing everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You got me on that. I know. But uh, it, was, well, it was just so good. Uh, and the, the story and the emotion, and I got to stress that the emotion is conveyed through the art style, through the world changing as you play. The pace of the game slows down in certain points like that where... Uh, you know, Ori's mom creature dies. I don't know if you've gotten to it, but the game has several of these, like, chase sequences where they're essentially stages you're forced to speed run. Like, there's some sort of uh, trap-type deal coming after you. You know, like uh, Indiana Jones running from the, the boulder. And you have to do all this perfect platforming trying to get away, and you're going to die a few times. You're absolutely going to die a few times. But when you finally beat it, you'll be like, damn, that was awesome. And it's it's the graphics, it's the pace, it's the music. It just all culminates perfectly. Like, that studio knew what the hell they were doing with that game. I honestly yeah. haven't even really dove into Ori 2 yet because I've just been lazy. And now that oh, I got okay. you playing 1, I'm right when you finish 1, I'm probably going to start 2. So we can run through that kind of side by side and figure uh, figure out our opinions together. Uh, yeah, so I mean, so far though, Blind Forest, I'm really, really loving it. I actually appreciate the recommendation, bro, because it really pushed me to start this game, and I'm definitely gonna play this to finish without a doubt. Uh, yeah, and oh, yeah, by the way, it, that's actually a Game Pass game. So uh, anyone yeah, uh, out there? What was I say? Yep. You're, if you're you have Game it. Pass, get the game. But yeah. also, you're crazy if you don't have that game without Game Pass. But you're also crazy if you don't have Game Pass. Uh, if you have the Xbox, I, I, I constantly look back to this deal as we've been doing the podcast. And I never took note of how glorious a thing like Game Pass really, really is. How valuable on the market. And you're starting to see other game companies try to incorporate this idea of Game Pass. You're starting to see it with PlayStation a little bit. Because it is such a fantastic idea. But nobody perfects it like Microsoft. Make no mistakes. The amount of access... Well, they had the money and the infrastructure with their... uh you know, their cloud service that they, they had kind of built those cloud servers for the Xbox One and Windows in general, what, eight, eight nine years ago. So they, they had everything in place to make this work right away, where a lot of these other companies are trying to build to it right now. And Microsoft kind of started a se- several steps ahead. Uh, honestly, you just said, you know, if you don't have Game Pass and you're an Xbox user, you're crazy, essentially. And I agree. But I want to go further with that and say that Microsoft's crazy for not getting Game Pass on even more devices already. And I know they've gotten it with, you know, xCloud, or now it's just called Xbox Game Streaming. I'm calling it xCloud. Uh, But they got that on the phones and tablets. They're saying that there's a a browser version coming. But I really think they need to reach out. They need to get 
some version of Game Pass on to the Nintendo Switch, if they can, on the PlayStation. I know that's going to be a much harder give, but I'd love to see them incorporate it. Even if it's for both systems, maybe they just don't include games that are already available on that platform. So you get like a lesser version of the subscription on those platforms. So it still benefits you to have it, period, but benefits you more if you have an Xbox. You know, right. They do need to get it everywhere, though, because it's the best service. And you see, like, EA partnered with them. Now EA Play is part of it. There's been a rumor running that Ubisoft's, uh, I think it's called Ubisoft Plus, is it's yeah. their PC streaming service. Supposedly they might be getting a uh, console client of that. Okay. okay. Uh, getting ready. And uh, rumor has it it might be on, uh, it might be on Game Pass as well. And I think that's something more uh, because of the cloud, because these companies want to reach gamers in areas of the world where consoles aren't really that big yet or are just never going to get big for whatever reason. And by getting to the cloud, you can get them. I mean, people, you know, we always talk about, oh, which system sold the most? I think you were just telling me, like, the Switch hit 78 million. And uh, the PS4, last I saw, was at, like, 110 million. But, like, think about this. The best-selling game system of all time is the PS2. It came just shy of 160, right? Yeah. But they say that there's 3 billion gamers on the planet. So, you've got, what, 5%? 5% of the gamers of the world bought a PS2? Hmm. I mean, the C that's interesting because you got to think the term gamer it's changed from when we were younger and we were absolutely you know, up and coming in the world because you got to think nowadays you pick up a phone you play angry birds you're considered a gamer you know you are playing a game and you know that the, the, i think the term gamer has been used a little bit more loosely and it's not so much console gaming or pc game it, it's everywhere no i, I mean, absolutely agree but i think what like what the point of it is is that they're looking at it like the more people they can get uh, just starting game. People that never thought they were in a game. People that were like, oh, yeah, I don't play video games. If they start playing Angry Birds, they might get really into gaming and then say, you know what? Screw it. Let me go grab an Xbox. Let me grab a Nintendo Switch. Let me grab a PC exactly. or a PS5. So they're looking at it. A lot of these companies are saying, yeah, the console and the PC market have always been beneficial to us. But the truth is, if you can reach people without the entry price of a game system or a computer, if you don't have to spend 300 400 500 or with computers upwards of two, dollars $3,000 to get into gaming, if you can just pull out that phone you already have with a, you know, I mean, you can get an official Xbox or PlayStation controller, or you could use like a third party, I'm, I'm, you know, Logitech has them. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, any other, any other Bluetooth controller, and you can play games like that, like Monster Hunter World. It's on the screen right now. If you could play this on the go without any entry cost, uh, as far as hardware goes, you're going to reach way more gamers than you've ever reached before. So, Agreed. I think it's going to benefit Microsoft with the cloud. I I think it's going to benefit Amazon. I don't know if you saw this. I forgot to send it to you. Google backed out today. Really? Yeah, Google, uh, I mean, they're, they're going to keep Stadia going, they say, but they, uh, they closed down their, their own first-party studios. They're done. They're not going to make games for Stadia. It's just going to be a third-party thing, which tells me they're likely going to cancel it altogether at some point. They're just trying to support the people that they already got to buy into it. So I'm guessing we're going to see... Another 6, 12 months, they'll start selling off whatever they have to Amazon. Or maybe even this is the way Tencent swoops in and gets involved in the cloud. I've been saying that name a lot. I do think they're coming. It's going to happen. Tencent, um, isn't that, uh, is that, is that, correct me if I'm wrong, is that the company making uh, Pokemon Unite? Uh, you know what, you're my Nintendo guy. I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to turn to I you know, for that. I know, I know. I just, I believe, I believe I'm, I'm 85% 90 uh, that I'm right, but, uh... I just wanted to confirm it, but I'll look it up real quick. While yeah, you're, uh... definitely look it up. Uh, I already did. Yeah, Tencent Games, Team Team I Studios. Right. Uh, so yeah, they're they're a company that's. I mean, they're pretty big. Uh, they're over in Asia. They're they're ballooning in value, and everyone knows that they're looking at purchasing game companies and stuff. So now that Google's stepping back, I'm assuming they'll probably try to swoop in and pick up some of the stuff. And them and Amazon and maybe even Microsoft will kind of, you know, p 
pick apart the carcass of Google Stadia to pad their stuff. But I just look at it like when you can reach 3 billion gamers instead of the console market that typically has maybe 200 million, gaming is going to see a, an explosion of content and users that we've never seen. It's becoming so much more valuable to be in gaming because of this. No, I agree 100%. Yeah. I agree. I was blown away, honestly. When I saw that Google stepped out, I expected them to step out at some point. I didn't expect it to be this quick. And it's going to be interesting because they, they had st like poached some pretty good talent. Uh, so I want to see where they land now that Google has backed off. I'm sure Microsoft will steal some because they've been stealing a lot of content. Uh, but I think everyone will reach out and try to hire some of these people. Hopefully none of these skilled developers go without work for too long. Right. And then, uh, well, the last game I've been playing, I've oh, been yeah. playing it too. Yeah, you got me. <laughs> Dead Cells is hot. Yeah, uh, I... hang on a second. You sent me some footage of Dead Cells. Let me find your footage real quick. I'll bring up, uh, boom. Oh, boy. Dead Cells. There it is. It seems to have jumped into the middle of your footage. Let me just restart it. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, there he is, the prison quarters. That's where there we, we start. There we go, yeah. Um, saw this game on sale, saw the DLC got released, half off on the Switch. I was like... You know, I've heard great things about this game. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick it up. Yeah, there's been a lot of and, talk. A lot of people that want, uh, you know, the Dead Cells guy uh, as a Smash character. Oh, I, I know you've mentioned be, it to me before, so I could see why he would be a recommended character. He would be such a great fit for Smash. I show off a little bit of the outfits I got here, real quick. Skeleton outfit. Got to get some green swing going on there. You know. All right, I like it. Um. First of all, I do want to give a shout out to my buddy Aqua, who uh, we showed some footage for the podcast. He did give me a ten dollars eShop card when I hung out with them after quarantine. Um, ended up getting the Dead Cells DLC with that, so I did just want to give him a shout out for that. That was awesome. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the guy from the Rocket League footage last episode. Yes, that's the guy. Right, the one I got <laughs> I got to kidnap. He's got to be my my gaming partner, not no longer yours. Right. Um, th this game, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I picked up this game expecting to put about five hours into it. That was, you know, because... Well, I'm at that number. So. You? I, I'm, I, dude, I've been playing for three days, and I swear to you, I gotta be at 20. I gotta be at 20. I, I've just gone insane on this game. I don't know what it is about this game. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's got that on... old arcade style where it's like a simple game, but it's still deep. So there's there's like a an addiction to it where when you lose you're always like damn I messed up I could have done better than that. You know you know what it is too is this game almost I, I'm not gonna say encourages you but it doesn't make you feel like shit for dying. No, absolutely. The point of the game is to die. Dead cells. You get you progress in the game for dying. You know as long as you get some levels done before that. But, I mean. There's, you know, usually a game, I die a couple times, I get really frustrated. I don't want to play it anymore. You're constantly progressing from dying, and every game is a new game. And that's what makes it fun, is really, the map is randomized every time. I hate that sword, time. by the way. The, I don't like the brawl. I don't like any two-hand weapon. I actually was, uh, as I was recording that, I was uh, going to tell you, I hate the two-handed weapons in this. And that's why you're going to see this, <laughs> this round not go so great. The third time was a charm on this recording. Spoiler alert. But, um... I, I'm just blown away by this game. It's truly fun. It's fast paced. The action is great. Um, and, and you find out a lot. There's so many secrets in this game. And, and I'm sure you're going to see some things that you haven't seen on your game yet in mine. Uh, but just... Oh, yeah, definitely. I haven't gotten that far. But I have played it a lot. Uh, I did try. I, I'll tell you, you know, I got to call uh, Microsoft out whenever uh, I think something's wrong. I told you I tried to bring this up on my xCloud at work. Now, I've used my xCloud. I was using it to play South Park at the start of this month. You know? But, right. um... I don't know exactly what, uh... What happened, but we got an update at some point. And I thought it was just this, but I've since gone back in and played other games. On my Galaxy Note 10 Plus, all of my xCloud app is, like, off aspect ratio. Like, it... It's like trying to display to like a maybe seven or eight inch screen when I only have a six inch. So like if you're looking at right. your, the screen right now, it cuts short of where 
your L, Y, X, Z, L, those icons, I can't even see them. Not just the letters, but the pictures. I can't see what sword I have, what bow I have. Like, It's essentially like More right above that out. is gone, and then right where your map is, to the left of that map, straight up. It's like, that's all I have. Like, I probably lost 30% of the screen. And in a game like this, I, I absolutely can't play it. So, Microsoft, can you flick, like fix that for me, please? Because I did want to play this at work. I'd be further in it if that was possible. Because I would have played all of my breaks and become absolutely useless uh, getting through breaks. Now, was this just a problem with Dead Cells that you had? Or did you try other games? No, nah, I, I tried other games. Because I thought it was just Dead Cells because I did South Park not long ago. And it was fine. And right, then that's what I'm thinking in my head. When I... Uh, when I turned this back on on my next break, I noticed that the load up screen when you're loading into the stream is wrong. There's normally a rocket ship right in the middle of the screen and it's like moving a little bit. It looks like it's flying with some lines behind it to give you the like hint of movement. And it's right. it's like at the bottom right corner of the screen. And I was like, oh no, the whole app is zoomed in. And I looked it up. There seems to be no way for me to uh, edit the aspect ratio myself. So it, it's got to be some sort of update they need to fix. Uh, if I find some other fix, I will definitely come on the podcast in another episode and say, hey, I was wrong. But I spent like an hour and a half trying to find one. And everything I've heard is other people saying, yeah, we've got the same problem going on. We got to wait for a new update. So, mm. yeah, not thrilled because I really love uh, xCloud. I just praised it a minute ago. Um, oh, absolutely. It does need to be fixed on my particular device. I don't know if it's happening like that on any other devices. Do you have a... Do you have an Android device? I do. Yeah, you should download uh, the xCloud app and see if uh, see if you can bring this up there. That's open now? That's not in beta anymore? No, it's open for as long as you have Game Pass Ultimate, you have xCloud. Oh, I did not know that. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's news. Okay. Yeah, well, there you go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, then. <laughs> Gonna have to check that out. So are you telling me Ori on my phone can happen? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. I thought that, honestly, I, I don't think I ever remember you. I mean, obviously, you had I think it, it when it was. I think it radar. launched fully uh, September 15th. Is like standing out in my head. Yeah. Um, wow, that long ago? Yeah. Jeez. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it was in beta for, I think I had it in beta for like upwards of a year. And then uh, uh, it finally came out for everybody. And, you know, they made it completely just free. Just as uh, long as you have um, Game Pass Ultimate, you have access to xCloud, which I think is the best way to do it. Don't don't lock me into another subscription service for xCloud. Connect it to the great subscription service you already have. Right. Which we're going to talk about later. Oh, absolutely. So uh, what, what were your impressions on Dead Cells? I, I think it's wildly addictive. Uh, I'm trying to get a couple of my friends to play it. Matt already turned it on. It's a it's nice. a fun game. It really, I mean, obviously, it looks like a classic game. Uh, it definitely has that eight bit style to it. But I mean, like, it has that classic, um, like arcade allure to it. Like when you went to the arcade when I was a kid, you would pick up a game like uh, Pac Man, Galaga, uh, you know, even deeper games like Street Fighter and whatnot. And they were all about being simple, yet deep. And addictive gameplay. So when you played, like if you lost, you were like, damn, I could have won that. I was a second away from winning that. I messed up. I got to do it again. Uh, another game that does this perfectly, if you remember from the 360, uh, Geometry Wars. The yes. more you play it, you want to play again. Every time you die, you're like, damn, I got to go again. Damn, I got to go again. <laughs> you know, and that's, no, that's what I get with this. I ended up playing this. I, I played it a little bit too long and, uh, you know, I picked Matt up from work. Uh, every night I got there kind of late. I was like, "Oops, <laughs> my bad, man. <laughs> Sorry, I got kind of caught up playing um, a video game." Yeah. <laughs> no, but serious. I mean, you lose yourself in this. I don't know. I am. I'm I watching mean, your it... gameplay right now. Uh, right here, you're probably playing about as good as I do. So uh, I'm happy that I don't look terrible. Uh, I know that you're uh, gonna get better yeah. on another go, but uh, for now, I look yeah. solid. Give it, give it my, give it my third run. I'll start going off on this, dude. Honestly, but uh, yeah, I didn't like my loadout here. I got the broadsword. I just don't like. I, I'm, I'm all bow on this one. I what mean, do I do with that? Oh, it's a teleport that? device. I can't do yes. that yet. Yep. I know See? it's, a, it's a rune you get. Well, I need that one. 
Yes, I, I can't tell you how to get it because I don't want to spoil it for you. No, nope, I'll get there's... it. It's going to happen. Okay, no doubt. See, I use a little potion uh, there. I don't know if you noticed also how big my health flask is. Yeah. Also, I'm, I'm looking, I'm noticing that uh, it looks pretty good. Like, I don't think that this is like a, you know, best in the world graphic style game anyway. But it's holding right, up. It... Looking at the Switch version, I'm not like, damn, this is ugly and doesn't compare well to the Xbox version. Uh, well, it looks yeah, this pretty is smooth. Game... I am seeing a little stutter, despite the fact that you told me there was none. Uh, but uh, it, I mean, it, it, it's very minimal. It's just certain footage, spots. Like, yeah. uh, when you did that ground well, I, slam, there was definitely a, a noticeable frame stutter. I can tell you now, when you change your outfit, you get a stutter. I did notice that today. If you actually watch uh, the beginning of this footage, you'll notice I get a little stutter when I actually change my outfit. But... I mean, all in all, I haven't noticed it when I'm playing ah, handheld. Death cheated. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I did cheat some death. Took a potion there. But, um, I mean, yeah, this game is spectacular, man. I am a huge fan, officially. Uh, like I said, I already bought both the DLCs. This was... The Fatal Fury is why it went on uh, sale. Or not Fatal Fury. It's not, it's not what it's called. Uh... You got the DLC. The what was it? Uh... Fatal Falls. Fatal yeah, Falls. I'm there sorry. We go. Fatal Falls. And then you got the Bad Seed on uh, sale. That's their first DLC. Then they have a free DLC too, but I haven't. I've seen where you go, but you have to unlock certain things within it to explain it that way. I actually, uh, um, I lucked out because this the... is in Game Pass. So you were like, hey, try Dead Cells. And you're not the only friend that has told me to, but you're like the one I was like, all right, I'm going to listen to. He told me it's good. I'll give it a go. And uh, so, yeah, credit to you. But yeah, I I happened to look and I was like, oh, it's on Game Pass. I can just give it a shot. But it was definitely good enough that I bought it. Um, luckily, I didn't actually have to buy it by it. I had some, uh, some Xbox rewards. So I was able to buy the game and all the DLC without actually spending a penny of my money. So I really. Oh, nice. I didn't know you got the DLC. Yeah, I grabbed the DLC okay. too. Uh, it was uh, on like a little bit of a sale um, on Xbox, just because it's a like Game Pass thing. It was, I think, it was like ten percent off. I think I paid like four fifty each or something. But, yeah. Uh, uh, so you I look forward to getting deeper in the game. The, <laughs> speaking of DLC, this is actually one of the DLCs for uh, the Bad Seed. Not the DLC that just came out, but the older DLC. This is uh, one of the maps, so. This this is also I think my first time going to it. Let's see if the achievement pops up. Oh no, it's my it's not my first time. Oh, I think I uh I think I sent you a thing from uh the company that does this. Their Twitter feed. They said that they have a year's worth of content planned out for this game. So that's wow. pretty freaking exciting. I'm excited. I, uh... Yeah, to know that yeah, it's not just done guy... already. This guy off the rip was a pain. I, th I remember my first time doing this run. I think I have another recording of it, and that dude's a disaster to face. I will say, the DLC maps are noticeably harder than the original content, which I like. And maybe it's just because I'm seeing new monsters. Like, this guy snipes you through the ground and shit. I hate it. Yeah, I'm seeing a bunch of guys that I don't think I'm going to be happy fighting. No, and then he's elite. Yeah, I think I get smoked here, I'm pretty sure. I took the potion. Yeah. Uh, Eventually, I I know this is the map I die on on this run. I just don't know when. All in don't all, worry about I it. like the game. I'm looking forward to playing more. I'm happy that you recommended it. Yeah, man, I'm glad you like it, man. I mean, I'm I'm a big fan myself of it already early on. Like I said, at least 20 hours in three days. I've had a it's lot of people take... tell me like, "Oh, Dead Cells is awesome. You should play it." And a lot of them are into like other games that I really don't like. So I'm like, maybe your opinion isn't as valid for me personally. But you and I seem to like a lot of similar games. So I was like, all right, if Sween's saying it's that good, I, I got to give it a go. You got it. I'm definitely <laughs> happy that I did. Good uh, if I, if good, we weren't I'm doing glad. the podcast right now, I'd probably be playing. <laughs> yeah, he, he's also entered my dream list for Smash DLC remainder. So uh... so you're one of those people that really wants him in there. Yeah, he, he, he just he's, makes sense. You have so many weapons you could use from him, so many different abilities. I just, he would be somebody completely unique to the series. His character model would look dope in Smash. And I, I you could do any of these maps if you really wanted to. Dude, like, imagine if they did like a 3D character model of him for Smash. 
But then right. his stage looked like this, and when you went to it, everyone looked like this. Like 8-bit, right? Yeah, I mean, it would be tough for them to redo everyone to give them a, a skin like this, but that would be sick. If they could pull that off... It would be amazing. Yeah. Well, what, how hard would it be, though, to put... Like, because you got to think... Well, I mean, they, they've these got to have, like, already have... 70-something characters. How many characters are they up to, man? Like 80-something, I think, with the DLC now. Yeah, so it's, uh... But th- it's but not that it would be hard, it's just time-consuming that you're going to have to do a 8-bit model for everybody and make sure their animations yeah, let me, fit. Let me ask you, how, ma- how many characters already have that 8-bit design, though? It's, it's not like you have to change too much off the original outside, you know, scale them. I mean, some of them do, fast. sure. But, like, it's still a lot of programming to change how they would fight on this, uh, you know, how the animations would play out at 8-bit instead of... No, I would. Know, it would be like graphics. making a whole other game. It would be dope. I would definitely be happy with it. I'd be happy if he just gets in the game because I know a lot of people, and now you included, really want him in there. But it would be cool if they went the extra mile and did that where his stage made everybody like this. Uh, I'd even or, honestly pay a little bit extra to make it happen. So. Yeah, or even, you know, it would be cool, though, if they didn't do that and they upscaled all the maps is, like, if they had doors on the map that you could enter and it takes you to, the, like, another map in Dead Cells. Yeah, that'd be cool. There's yeah, a lot of things like that could be that. done. But we are spending so, a lot of time on Dead Cells. Let's... Yeah, let's uh, let's talk let's talk our consoles now. Now that we talked our games we've been playing, and uh, we did talk a little bit of Xbox Game Pass. Where do you, where do you want to start, man? Talk to me. Well, I guess I'll bring uh, my Monster Hunter footage back up just randomly, and uh, we'll go on to Nintendo. I know that one of the first things you wanted to talk about is that the Monster Hunter Rise Switch. All right, I'm gonna take our uh, logo down so they can see the date there. March 26, 2021. That's the release date of the game, and it turns out. There is a special edition of the system coming as well. It to looks Japan. pretty damn dope. Uh, yeah, to Japan. It looks pretty damn dope. So it really we'll does. Go back. All right, take it um, away. You're my Switch guy, yeah. my Nintendo guy. So I think this is interesting because um, we got the Mario Switch announced. And now we got the Monster Hunter Rise Switch announced. Um, I first of all, the first thing I like about this console right off the back, or right off the bat, is the back. Is the back. Um, all right. Yeah. I like how they actually did something with the back that was unique. Even though they didn't do, like, a full color, they have, like, the white coming off it with almost, like, the shuriken-shaped stars. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, got... it's nice to see the system actually getting some legitimate uh, special editions lately. You know, we talked about it a little bit with Mario. I think this one is much more impressive than the Mario one. Me too. Uh, I'm a little bit upset that this is a Japanese thing and uh, not a here thing. <laughs> I would definitely uh, well, buy this. It, 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 did get, it did get announced in Europe, so it could make its way here. Don't be surprised. Well, I'll hope so then. Because they'll, they'll get, what, stopped. a seventh Switch purchase for my household? <laughs> I'll have to give one uh, away at that point. Like, Who else wants a Switch? No, but it, it's definitely dope. But um, personally, I probably wouldn't end up getting the Switch. I would uh, probably end up getting the Pro Controller that they announced for it, too. But, um, I mean... It's just because I don't want to get a new Switch until... I, I think there's going to be a Switch coming for Pokemon 25. I'll put it that way. And I'm holding out until that comes. Because I, I think it's coming. I'd be shocked. But uh, Pro Controller, I could always use another one. So maybe I'll get that. It, it pretty much looks like the Switch with the dragon. Oh, I didn't know you had it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I like that. It's got pretty much the same... Uh... Let me bring that back up. It's got like the same theme going as the dock pretty much yeah that same dragon is right there the same exact print minus the uh tiny little lo- oh no they are there yeah the tiny little logos are there okay yeah i like i like me too only thing i don't like and you don't like too we both talked about this is uh it, we don't like the fact it stops on the handles i i yeah, hate when they why? do that well uh, at least make the hand like like hold on though if they if they just made the handles gold it would have been dope absolutely why black absolutely like and that's one thing, that's why I love the Smash Bros. Pro Controller, and that's why I jumped right on it. It's because those white handle grips, it, it goes well with the black, but too much gray, it's just too much. Um, But that's it for Nintendo news. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I, we uh, we have about... uh, Apex. You told me. I haven't Apex. heard anything, man. I haven't heard anything... You I'm know, telling you, it's shadow dropping tomorrow. It's shadow it's dropping, shadow dropping tomorrow. tomorrow, you say. February the 2nd of 2021. 
Yeah, and he I was, I was Apex expecting to hear something. Apex Season 8 launches and Apex launches on the Switch. Oh, well, there's a lot more to it. Uh, the Apex uh, Japanese website posted for the Switch. I think you had an image that you sent me through the week of uh, like a... Yeah, like a game a store, store that has a, you know, a, a like human-sized advertisement for Apex on the Switch. So it, it's coming. I hope you're right and it shadow drops tomorrow. That'd be great. But, yeah, uh, I think it's going to happen. Yeah, I um, yep. I haven't Don't seen any surprised. confirmation for tomorrow. Although tomorrow seems to be a, a big day in gaming, we've got a couple other things to talk about for tomorrow. Yeah, we'll definitely uh touch on that in a little bit. But yeah, it does seem like tomorrow. But I do believe Apex is coming tomorrow, which would be great. I'd love to have another game I could cross play with my friends, and you know, um, we'll have to see how it runs. I'm very curious if Apex comes to the Switch, how it's gonna run. That's gonna be critical. So, really uh, I mean, I'm with you. I'm def- I'm always critical of, you know, performance on the Switch because I do think that a lot of games uh, underperform in comparison to their console brothers. But, like, that engine, uh, the Source engine, like, it's not that hard to run. And uh, I-, I believe, like, Titanfall 2 runs on it. And on 1X, like, there's spots where it actually renders the game at, like, 6K even though the system can't put out 6K. It just super samples it. Because it's not really a tough engine to run like that. It's very well optimized. I do think that that team will make it run smoothly on the Switch. I'm not telling you it's going to be as smooth as the other consoles, but I don't think we're going to see a lot of stutter, uh, and it's going to be a worthwhile experience. I I think they would have canceled it if they had checked and been like, yeah, this isn't going to work good. Right. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what happened in fall last year, is that they didn't like what they saw as the final product, and... They're like, hey, let, let's work on this a little more before we drop this. Because uh, Fortnite was a game that was really clunky, actually. When I remember in 2018, when I got the Switch, you'd be dropping on your umbrella and you would look at the buildings and you don't see the buildings. They're all invisible. And then you land on an invisible roof and then it loads in like 15 seconds later. Nowadays, it ain't like that. I could see everything when I'm dropping. So Yeah, definitely more uh, optimized today. Uh, Epic's really done good at keeping up with their games like that. So I'll give them a lot of credit. But- yeah, they do. Um, but yeah, hopefully the rumors are true. I, I, I think you're going to see Apex Legends on the Switch tomorrow, and I think you're going to see me on Apex Legends on the Switch tomorrow. Um, <laughs> All right. Next thing I want to talk about is Balan Wonderland. Uh, and I wonder yeah, where I the wasn't... fuck they went wrong with this game. Oh, my God. It. I mean, listen, on PS5, we talked about this. It looks great. It's Wonder World, it right? Nice. Yeah. All right. What I say? Wonderland? Yeah. Uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> Had me for it, it a second. I'm like, am I wrong or is he wrong? It, it, it kind of reminded me of Knights, but it failed to be Knights. You remember? You know what I'm talking about? Knights for like, uh, like Sega. You know, Sega. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, dude, on the Switch, this game just looked honestly piss poor. Um, and I'm not the only person who feels like that. In fact, I would say a majority of the gaming community agrees that this game just looks awful on Switch. Um, I remember you did send me an article saying performance. It wasn't up to par on Switch. Um, like, to the point where it should be canceled. I don't think it was to that point. I do notice it is... Uh, yeah, that's John Linneman, uh, Digital Foundry. is a tech guy, one of the tech guys at Digital Foundry. Uh, he came out and talked about it and said that, you know, the game was a mess even on the PS5, but he was like, the Switch version, it, it should just be canceled. And, I mean, I haven't played it. I know you did. I tend to trust his opinion. I've, I've never seen him be, like, a really biased person with his, uh, with his commentary on games. He's normally really straight to the point about the statistics and how well something runs or doesn't run. So if he's telling me it should be canceled, there has to be something legitimately compromising with the game. I mean, either the visuals are so bad that it's not even reminiscent of the game it's supposed to be, or the performance is really bad. I'd love to see Digital Foundry do an actual, like, deep, legitimate analysis of it. I, although I don't know if they tend to do that uh, for demos. I don't think I've seen that very often. Uh, no. Yo, Battle in Wonderworld, by the way, is uh, it's directed by Yuji Naka. Uh, and the art direction, I, I can never say the guy's first name, but it's like Naoto Oshima. They're, they're the creators of Sonic the Hedgehog and Knights. Yeah, I know. So, I like, know. that's, that's why there was a lot of hype behind this, because, like, these are guys that created some of the greatest games of our childhood. 
And now, I don't want to, you know, put out judgment right now off just the demo because, you know, you never know how a final game ends up. I remember, you know, I said before I've been gaming most of my life and uh, Halo showed up at E3, I want to say 2001. It looked terrible. It ran terrible. People were saying it should be canceled. And five months later, it was the best first-person shooter on the market. So sometimes a demo is really not anywhere near indicative of the final product. Yeah, but with that being said, I feel like you have to be critical towards the demo so these game developers get it that we're not fucking happy and something needs to change. You know, straight uh, up. I mean, I, I feel like yeah, that I push, share my push, critiques, push. definitely. But you got to understand that a demo is typically put together several months in advance. It's not like... Like, if they dropped a demo of Monster Hunter Rise today, th that demo would have been, like, built and bug-tested probably early December, maybe mid-November. And the development on the game continues. So, it, it's like, you can't really judge by a demo because a demo is an older version of a game. And you don't know how many bugs are knocked out of a game in the last two three months yeah of but it's not but it's not it's not bugs it's lackluster content it's poor execution of what could be actually a good game yeah still you don't know what in there is final and what in there is just to show the premise of the game i understand but i'm just saying if, if you know if enough people speak up but that they're not happy about something then typically a company sees that and tries to change it so i mean i don't know maybe you know maybe it, they already have it taken care of and we don't know that's what i'm saying I like yeah. Right now, this game comes out, I think it said end of March. Is that what it said? I don't know offhand, to be 100% honest. Uh, yeah, same day as uh, Monster Hunter, March 26th. That oh. means this game should be submitted for certification any day now. So, like, the final game, you know, minus its day one patch, is being submitted to, you know, the companies for certification probably within the next five days. That demo has no input on that at all. I'm yeah, I promise well, you, that demo was finished at, at the latest two months ago. And well, it, I mean, it can listen, change a lot. Thing, I'm not saying it's gonna. This game might suck. Alright? But don't use the demo to judge the game as a whole. Wait till the game comes out. Hopefully it's better. If not, well then they really screwed up because they do have the feedback from people saying, yeah, the demo's inexcusable. Listen, I'm I'm not one of these people that preach uh, first impressions are everything. They're not everything, but I will say they're a part of it, and it, it matters. And I'm just saying, not a good first impression for me. And I hope they change my mind on it, because you know this game does have potential. It is up my graphic style. It is my you know it's in my alley of what I like in gaming. And I mean, listen, they even have this little Chow World section almost that it reminds you of Chow World, but it, it's just nothing like that. It, it's just horrible. It's boring. I, I just hope they fix a lot of things with there. At least this is just a little bit of content they're showing the worst of the game. Well, uh, for your sake, I hope they do. Um, yeah. I, you know, like I, I mean, said, I haven't tried it. I do intend to try it. I meant to do it on one of my days off, and I've just been busy. But I, uh, I will get around to it. I watched some footage of someone comparing the Switch and the PlayStation versions, and I will say the PS5 version looked still not great, but dramatically better than the Switch version. So... Hopefully, uh, the final product is better than what we've seen right now. That's right. That's all I can say. Um, uh, and th and then we got uh we got a little bit more news. You know, some quick things I'm gonna touch, and then uh we'll let we'll switch over. But I got three little quick things. Uh, let's hear it. Don't be don't be surprised if you see Mario and Rabbids two this year. Um, I've been hoping. If you look at, I've been hoping. You, I thought that game was great. Yeah. Um, so Ubisoft's official Rabbids page, they changed the page name. It was Rabbids official, and now it's at Mario Rabbids. So it's just very odd for them to make that change, if you ask me, to go from Rabbids official to Mario Rabbids. It looks like that Rabbids is going to join the Mario universe almost, and I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a sequel. Uh, Nintendo's fiscal quarter, uh... You know, reported since December 31st, the Switch has sold 79.87 million units, which I think is insane. Uh, they have their best quarter since 2008 in the Wii era. Well, that's impressive. The Wii sold crazy. I mean, you couldn't find that for two years. 
<laughs> I mean, what makes what makes it even more impressive, if you ask me, and I understand we had a lot a lot of issues at launch and everything like that, but the fact that Nintendo is having their best quarter since 2008 in a quarter where next gen consoles came out. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, the, the consoles came out in the second half of the quarter when you're looking at it, and they weren't readily available, and they still did great anyway. But, I mean, your your best quarter is always going to be in the holiday, and I do yeah. think that part of it has to do with uh, COVID. You know, there's more people getting into gaming than ever before because they, they can't do anything else. And I hope that they stick around. I hope that they enjoy their time in the gaming world, and they say, you know what, we're going to keep gaming after this. But yeah, either way, it's still great to see Nintendo doing well. Animal Crossing's New Horizons, they 31, break 31 million. million. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's an impressive figure to to see any game hit 31 million is impressive. But when that 31 million is like almost half of the console sales, that, right? Really quick, wanted to hit the uh, February successful. releases for Nintendo. We got a couple great releases coming in February. It's definitely a wallet hurting month. Um, <laughs> a wallet hurting month. The first one isn't actually a wallet hurt. Too bad um, they don't have Game Pass. Well, first of all, you got maybe Apex tomorrow, but we'll we'll, we'll set that aside right now. Um, February fourth, you got this game Skyforge. Uh, not not a huge huge game known. It's an MMORPG with a, you know decent graphics, looks fun, and it's going to be free on the Switch. So uh, I mean, a free MMORPG is something I'm definitely willing to try. I'm a big MMO guy, so definitely check that out if you're. Uh, you have a Switch, February 4th, that drops. Uh, you got Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury, February 12th. We already know. The hype is unreal. Yo, you know, um, actually, on Super Mario 3D World, uh, a thing popped up today where they were talking about the performance of the game. And it, yeah, you know, I don't really talk about performance on Switch titles too much because I, I don't uh, play them a lot. I, I look into it when there's a noticeable uh, deficit. And I'll find out and let my friends know. You know, like, The Outer Worlds was one that I really bashed. Um, but Super Mario 3D World, typically Nintendo games run flawlessly on Nintendo hardware, you know? Yeah. And so Super Mario 3D World on the Wii U ran at 720p, period. Uh, and I have it. it. It's a really awesome game. Anyone that has played it already knows that. Anyone that hasn't, you're about to really enjoy yourself if you grab it on the Switch. It is an awesome game, and I'm looking forward to the new content. But uh, it looks really good. And now we found out that with the Switch, it's going to run 1080p when docked, 720p when handheld, which is kind of typical. A lot of games, especially from Nintendo, do that. And you don't need to run it higher than 720p on the handheld because that's the resolution of the screen. So I don't know if super sampling is really even worth it on a, right. you know, a, a 6.2-inch screen or whatever it is. Oh, that's fair. Um, but the Bowser's Fury mode... Right, the the new content. We found out that uh, unlike the rest of the game, which will be 60 frames per second in both handheld and docked, Bowser's Fury content is going to be 30 frames per second when it's in handheld. Uh, so you're going to see a noticeable drop in fluidity in that game when you're not playing on your dock in the extra content modes. I I really I'm eager to see uh, how they handle it. Because I think people are becoming more and more uh, annoyed when content doesn't run at a performance that they like. And when you give it to them at 60 and then drop it to 30 in another mode, I do think they're going to be like, hey, wait a minute, this doesn't seem that good. And you in particular, I'm really dying to see your reaction to it as you get to essentially switch back and forth between 60 and 30 frames. Something pretty rare in a console game uh, to be right. able to do as easily as just picking up your Switch. Now is that something confirmed or is that being reported? Because I'm just I'm I'm curious about one thing, and is is Mario Odyssey a full on 60 FPS game no matter what? Uh, I'd have to look up the resolution of it. Because yes. I'm I'm curious because I'd be shocked if Odyssey runs 60 FPS the whole time and then Bowser's Fury runs 30 FPS. But I mean, I guess with Bowser changing the map, I could see that maybe stress testing uh, the Switch a little bit. Uh, but. I mean, yeah, every report I'm seeing, every website that's popping up right now is saying that uh, Eurogamer has, and I mean, that's Digital Foundry. Eurogamer is where yeah, Digital yeah. Foundry is, uh, is coming out saying that Bowser's Fury runs at 30. Oh, all right. Well, so, I'll be playing docked. Well, at some point, you're going to have to pull it off the dock and see what you think about it. Oh, absolutely. 
Uh, so, you know, that's that's a second game. Uh, Persona 5 Strikers, which I feel like is completely gone off the radar because a lot of people requested this when we got Joker and Smash because everybody was like, how do we get Joker and Smash, but he's not even on the Switch? <laughs> which I, I get that. Why? Well, I agree. Why was Joker and Smash if he doesn't have a game on the Nintendo? Um, so Persona 5 Strikers is coming to the Switch. And then... Uh, you got Ghost and Goblins Resurrection, February 25th. And, by the way, Persona is February 23rd. You got Ghost and Goblins, February 25th. And then you got Bravely Default 2, February 26th. Uh, I mean, that, yeah, very much looking forward to Bravely Default. So, you'll yeah, catch I'm me not on gonna my lie to you. there. Obviously, Mario 3D World is my most hyped one. But after that, I'm really looking forward to Ghost and Goblins. That was a game I did not play originally on the Super Nintendo. I got the SNES um, online, and that was one of the first games I tried, and it was really, really, really fun. Well, also, we got a, uh, real quick, that PH Brazil, the uh, a noted Nintendo leaker, he's been accurate about some stuff in the past, so people give him some credibility. Uh, he tweeted this actually like a month ago. Uh, someone asked about, like, what we have to look forward to for the Switch in 2021 so he tweeted out five pictures uh it's breath of the wild 2 something from splatoon i don't know if that means splatoon 3 uh, an expansion to splatoon 2 uh metroid i'm not sure what that means either are we going to see metroid prime 4 is he saying we're getting metroid prime trilogy is it that rumored 2d metroid game that people have been talking about uh, a new Fire Emblem. I know you expressed your uh, dislike of them going with a new Fire Emblem after we just got one so recently. But I, I think that that franchise tends to release a new game like every two or three years. So yeah, but then fits. you said then you said a Fire Emblem character in Smash, and then I was way more cool with the new Fire Emblem game because I will be <laughs> fucking yeah. stressed if we see another Fire Emblem character in Smash. Uh, and then of course uh, he tweeted a picture of uh, Pokemon looking like it's a Diamond and Pearl remake, which we've talked about on here. We've heard a lot that that's coming. I don't care what anyone says, that's coming. Um, there was also reports that he had come out and told people that the name of the Switch Pro was going to be called the Super Switch. I did see that he said on his Twitter today that that is not the case. That's just the name he likes, and it's the anniversary of the Super Nintendo, so he just thinks that it's a good fit. But with them showing the Monster Hunter Rise Switch and the Mario Switch, I don't know anymore, man. I would think that Nintendo wouldn't want to flood the market with special editions if they were dropping a new system. But like I said before, Nintendo does what Nintendo wants to do. And it works, so we can't really knock them. But with that, I'm uh, I'm done with Nintendo. That actually ran longer on Nintendo than I planned. Uh, huh. You want to hop on to PlayStation? Yeah. All right, so PS5, uh, an hour and 40 minutes from now, uh, Destruction All-Stars is officially released. I don't know if it'll actually be loaded on the servers for me to download. I don't know what time Sony tends to do that. It seems to be different with some games. I am a little bit annoyed now that I say that. Uh, Microsoft lets you pre-install games, uh, even ones that you don't own yet. So that would have been nice if, uh, if I had the option to pre-install it. My internet's fast enough, but people out there that don't have really quick internet and are really looking forward to Destruction All-Stars, whenever it comes out, you're going to have to wait a few hours, you know, or a while for it to install. Uh, that sucks. But you and I both yeah. watched the state of play. They did seven minutes, uh, you know, last week. I, I think I'm more excited for the game than ever before. Like, I really, I had seen the initial trailer and I had heard a little bit, but I hadn't really looked into it. So, essentially, it's got, like, Fortnite-esque, uh characters each with their own custom skills and then your cars are kind of loadouts and it's like each time you get into a car it'll kind of switch to your version of that car and you start out on foot you run around the arena you find a car you get in and it's just destruction derby destroy everything in your path and you want to be like the last man standing and like if your car gets destroyed then you get out and go try to find a new one or steal someone else's uh, with your special abilities and whatnot, and it just it looks like it's gonna be a whole hell of a lot of fun, like a Fortnite Rocket League crossover. And I I actually wish I had it pre-installed so I could go ahead and start playing uh, in an hour and forty minutes. But I I know you watched the state of play. I wanted to know what you thought about it. Yo, I I love the look of this game. Uh, it reminds me of a modern take on a game like Destruction Derby. 
Um, and then you give it some esports kind of elements to make it a more competitive game to where you can not just get blown up in a vehicle, but you still have a chance if your vehicle's done to make an opportunity. But for, forget that. Forget forget all the game. The gameplay's great. The gameplay looks phenomenal. It looks like a unique concept that we've never seen before. But they put a lot of love into this game. Um, it it, it, it kind of gives me that Rocket League atmosphere with how esport friendly they are with it almost uh such as their design in the arenas uh how you got the commentary i thought it was brilliant for them to bl- uh, bring the commentary into the game and i think it sounds enthusiastic whoever i don't know who they have as the commentator on that game but when i was watching that state of play and i heard the guy talking about the game um it, it just it's it sounded very uh like you're at an esports arena playing this game yeah, uh, they definitely, like, that studio, it, it's, you know, something they wanted to do. Uh, it's not just, like, something that they were assigned to. So, the, you can tell that they enjoyed themselves. I know there's some uh, some flack for the game right now. People are complaining because some of the content is locked behind paywalls and, uh, you know, content you're going to have to buy. Uh, some of it's even, like, story-related content. I, that would really make me mad if this was a game you had to buy outright for $70. But it's coming out in an hour and 38 minutes, and it's the PlayStation Plus free game for the month. So, with it being essentially a free-to-play game, they can charge if they need to. They gotta make some money. The game looks damn good. I'm sure they didn't make it for free. They need to make some money, so let's not complain if they want to make some money off of it. You know, I hate when people complain about uh, microtransactions if it doesn't affect the gameplay. If it's a cosmetic thing, you know, people complain about a lot of things, and it's just well, people are complaining here because it's like some of it is story related, so it's like you can't progress through certain spots without it, and I do understand, but the game's still free. When it's free, free I I can't, I can't knock that. Like you're you're getting it with PS Plus, which most people that are uh, PlayStation fans are going to have. So it just, I'm not going to sit there and say that that's a problem. It's not. Well, he, 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 I mean, it's 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 essentially like paying for DLC on a free game, then, if you would. I mean, listen, you just can't complain if you got a free game and they're making you pay a little bit extra for an optional feature. Um, like, like if it, if it was to the fact where you could buy different cars and because you spent fifty dollars, you're gonna blow me up five times faster. That shit is unacceptable. Yeah, absolutely. But if it's for content and story of a game, really, what they're doing is making the if, game if it's free not like, pay to win, then I'm fine. Right, absolutely, and I agree a hundred percent. But I don't think I, I think the game looks phenomenal. I think it's going to be a future esport game. You're going to see a lot of competition in it, and it's going to so. be very successful. Uh, moving on from Destruction All Stars, I know this is technically for everything, but they have had a really nice relationship with Sony recently. So uh, Sony kind of got to reveal the Resident Evil uh, Village or Resident Evil Eight, uh, you know, new gameplay, and it's a little bit more of an open world. Uh, game. There are some closed, you know, amazing environments. They released the, uh, the, what is it? Visual showcase demo, which is less gameplay and more of just kind of walking around showing you how good their engine is because it is damn good. Uh, with the, you know, the nine foot six, and that's her actual, uh, height, according to Capcom, the nine foot six vampire lady that everyone's making memes about. Uh, yes. look, it looks great. Final, uh, Resident Evil 7 was great. Resident Evil 8 is going to be great. I uh, I like that they they branched out with 7 and, you know, changed the, um, the gameplay to first person and a little bit more of, like, a terrifying experience uh, akin to what we saw with Silent Hills that got canceled. So I want to see where they go with that part of the world. I'm also happy that they keep going with, like, Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes and rumors of four and code veronica so i'll be looking forward to those like just because one works doesn't mean you abandon the other so it's nice to see that they're supporting both types of gameplay i agree 100 percent uh and that i think they, they that came out or uh, comes out may may 7th i believe is the date they put out so let's look forward to that i gotta finish seven before that because i played it in vr on ps4 and i was like yep you know what i want to keep my shorts so i'm gonna turn it off but uh, really, I just I started it and never got back to it, so I got to do that. Um, a big one that came out uh, today, I mean, not came out, but news that came out today, 
Uh, and this is funny because I brought Matt home from work last night, and we were talking about different games that we'd like to see patches for for the new systems. And I was like, oh, well, the, the go-to one for me is God of War. You know, God of War, honestly, might be the best game ever made. It's definitely one of the best games of this last generation. Uh, and it was just so ballsy to see them completely change the style of game that they were making and still be wildly successful. So, God of War is getting a PS5 patch. It's going to run, uh, essentially, on PS4, it had two modes. On PS4 Pro, you could e either run, like, favoring uh, resolution, where it ran, you know, uh, with a sharper image, but at 30 frames per second. Or you could favor performance, where it ran closer to 60 frames per second, but at 1080p. So, the new update essentially brings you up to 4K with 60 frames per second. Uh, and significantly improved loading times because of the PlayStation's hard drive. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to diving into it again. But, man... You said that's tomorrow, right? Yes, that's tomorrow. And they My announced it freaking... today? Yes, yes. That's that's awesome. That's a nice little drop that they did. Absolutely it is. And, you know, they did reiterate that uh, God of War Ragnarok is going to be coming out in 2021, which I know you're not sold on that yet. But, I mean, uh, it's not that I'm not sold on it. Like, I think it should come out in 2021. It, it's been... You know, by the end of this year, it will be over three years since the release. And, like, the first trilogy of games came out, like, on two- and three-year intervals. And you got to think that the game's going to be built on the same engines of the God of War that exists. So it's not like they got to redesign the game from the ground up. It should be out by the end of 2021. I'm just concerned because of COVID. I don't know if COVID may have affected that and we could see it slip into early uh, 2022. Hopefully not, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, I know it's it's messing me up that they decided to do this patch because, you know, I, one of my New Year's resolutions was to beat more games. And now you got me playing Dead Cells instead of Assassin's Creed, and now they're patching God of War, so I'm going to jump back into that. Like, man, I'm going to fall right back into this, like, not beating games. Does it count if I beat God of War again? Can I count that as one of my games? No. Oh, man. <laughs> that you seems can't, unfair. You can't beat the same. It's got to be a new ex no. It's got to be a new experience. It's it be it a new is game. a new experience. It's 4K 60 frames. That's new. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's your goal, guy. Since when do I set the standard? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, is this our footage still? Is this yeah, it just, it's right looped now? around. I think it's only an hour long. Uh, go to the um, dead cells. I still had some more on there. Do, 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 do. Well, it looks like it restarted. Just fast forward to. Uh, it's fine. I die, that... Just let it go. All right. All right. Uh, another quick thing, uh, you know, Control. We've talked about this before. Um, the Remedy game, the 505 Games is the publisher, and they did some really grimy shit with their uh, their finances with it, kind of forcing people to charge uh, or to pay to get the next gen upgrade. Made a lot of people mad. Uh, it turns out it wasn't really a big deal because the game is in Game Pass and it's a free game for the month for PS4, which upgrades to the PS5 version. So we didn't really have to pay for it in the end. Um, Digital Foundry did their analysis of it and everything I've seen looks great. Uh, massive upgrade over the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X version. Almost 100% stable frame rates. Uh... Ray tracing is there. I mean, it's not as good as, like, a high-end computer, but it the image quality is still leaps and bounds better than, uh, you know, the current-gen system. Or I shouldn't say current-gen. We should start calling them last-gen now. So the last-gen systems. I know uh, Digital Foundry said the it was, like, 1.8 times the resolution of the PS4 Pro at double the frame rate in the performance mode. And then it has the ray tracing in the 30 frames mode. And even with that, it pretty much holds to 30 frames, almost locked. So it's definitely uh, it's definitely a big upgrade. I'm finally going to play the game. And um, I'll, I'll give you my impressions on it after I do that. Uh, I guess um, they're going to have another video. Because this one really only compared PS4 Pro to PS5. So they've got another video coming uh, tomorrow or the day after. That's going to show uh, the Xbox Series X against PS5. So we can see that comparison. Uh, I hate those comparisons. You know, I don't really care which one is better. But, like, people like to use them as, like, fuel for this console war. Like, oh, man, this one has two extra frames over that one. That one has 45 more pixels. Like, look, man, as long as you enjoy the game, you enjoy the game. 
I mean, you're, you're playing Dead Cells on the Switch. I can tell you that, yeah, like, the Xbox is way better than the Switch, but as long as you enjoy it, who freaking cares? I mean, really. Gaming like game. Gaming like game. Hashtag. Damn there right. you go. Um, Damn right. Man, that's guy with the shield Probably. beat you up, by the way. But you know what? You're right, and that was something I wanted to say earlier when we were talking about... I feel, I feel like one gaming market that gets a lot of hate is the mobile gaming. People say it's not real games. Yeah, you're why? not a real why? gamer. You're not a real gamer because you play mobile. Like, dude, yeah, if you why? game, you're a gamer. I don't, I don't care right. what you play. Respect it, and like, and it, it's people like that that complain that, like, you know, the game, you know, gaming could use more people. Gaming could use more people. Well, when you're sitting here discouraging people that are taking that first steps from playing games, it's like, yo, it's like if we went to the gym, and I'm ben, or you know, you're benching two fifty, and I'm benching like one thirty, which is probably realistic numbers right there. But um, <laughs> if we're benching True. that, bro, and you're like. You're like, wow, your weight is weak. That's that's not real weight. You're not a real gymnast. You're not a real weightlifter. Like, yeah, I'm not going to want to fucking work out, you know? And, like, it's the same thing with mobile gaming. You, you ruin it for people that want to just play their own games. Uh, I, I can't their- stand that. I mean, honestly, statistically, the average gamer only spends, like, two and a half games worth of money a year on games. So the average gamer buys, like, two games in a DLC pack every year. And when you think about the games that really sell well, like, you know, every year, Madden, Call of Duty... Uh, you know, battlefields, stuff like that. You got to think that those people that are out there, like you're not a real gamer because you play on freaking uh, on mobile. Like, well, you know what? You're not really a real gamer either. A real gamer, by statistics, is those people that only spend 180 dollars a year on games. Right. You know, you're like a whale. You're you're a freak gamer like me. I I spend a crazy amount, but I don't want to say like, oh yeah, well. I spend more than you, or I play more than you, so I'm more of a gamer than you are. Dude, just play games and enjoy them. Game and let game, and right. leave everyone alone. Yo, and you know, you know what a real gamer is in my eyes? Is not only somebody who plays games, but they keep up on all kinds of games, and they don't bash one game because it's not your style. You can't sit here and bash a whole market of games and think they're all bad. Like, you know, there are some great mobile games. I don't care if you played Subway Surfers, you played a mobile game. And there's a lot of people that love Subway oh, Surfers. Dude, that I game played is the dope. hell out of Subway Surfers. Game is dope. You know what I mean? Like, and, I, and there's so many good free games that you get there. I, I dude, listen, I, I'm going to tell you right now for the last couple of years, I've truly felt this way and I can get some shit for this. I really don't care. I'd rather play free Madden mobile and pay $60 to play a new Madden game that I don't feel like they're putting enough effort into. Uh, you know, I it's played this true. year's Madden. I thought it was solid. And I haven't played mobile, so. Uh, but, I mean, to each their own. Like, I'm going to game the yeah. way I game. You're going to game the way you game. And that's that. I don't I don't need to be like, oh, you play Madden mobile. Right. And there's and there's nothing wrong with me getting an experience for football for free that I enjoy almost just as much as I would on a console at this point. Yeah. I mean, um, I really just play for the ultimate team, and that's pretty much what the Madden Mobile is. Is it's just a straight up ultimate team mode, with seasons and everything. But still, I mean, yeah. So uh, going back to the control thing, there will be another video from Digital yeah. Foundry, and I love their videos. I do. I I love the the face offs. I just hate the way they're used by the public. You know, I love when Digital Foundry breaks down ray tracing and explains exactly what's going on to me. That's awesome. I you know. It's very informative, and it's the reason I understand a lot more of the tech than I did a couple of years ago. I just right. hate that people want to use it to be like, oh, my box is better than your box. Yeah, like, there's no need for that. Yeah, none at all. Game in like game, leave that be. Uh, I guess we can move on to Xbox, yeah? Uh, Xbox had a price increase, right? <laughs> Uh, or wait, they maybe they didn't have a price increase. I'm not sure. They, they kind of had one. Yeah. <laughs> they tried so, to have one. So uh, last week when we didn't do our podcast, Xbox decided they were going to uh, artificially increase the price of Xbox Live. Um, and when I say artificially, what, what I mean is they were increasing the price without increasing the value. You know, it's like uh, they had decided... Xbox Live, which has been sixty dollars a year for a while at the uh, you know the best pricing, was well, going to become one hundred and twenty. So it's not just an increase; like it, it's a doubling. You know, an increase would have been like, oh yeah, it's seventy dollars now. No, it, it you doubled the price, and you didn't give us anything else. It, it's like your landlord comes to you right now and says, hey, you know how you pay seven hundred dollars rent? Well, I'm not going to do anything to the apartment, but from now on, you're going to pay fourteen. Yeah, like what? Like uh, <laughs> what? 
You know, now sure about that? <laughs> there's a lot of people talking about what exactly this was. Were they ever intending to actually increase the price? Was it just like a PR stunt so they could show like, oh yeah, we listened to our gamers. You know, they said don't do it and we didn't do it when really they didn't want to in the first place. Or my own personal thought, I believe they did it to make Game Pass Ultimate look like a better deal. You know, right now at 60 bucks, uh, Xbox Live Gold is, you know, 5 bucks a month. Uh, Game Pass is 10 so for 15 a month, you get Game Pass Ultimate, which merges them together, gives you the cloud access, and uh, gives you Game Pass or PC. So it's a pretty damn good deal. But if you were to say that Xbox Live was suddenly double the price that it normally is, well, Game Pass is an even better deal. They might. I, I, I do think that was, like, their thinking to it. But, like, they might want to rethink where that logic existed. They already have. They just reported, like, 18 million uh, Game Pass users. So, I mean, that means it went up 3 million in three months. There's, there's no need to create a, a false increase in price. You don't have to do it. You can just keep charging what you're charging. You went up 3 million without a major release. You went up 3 million without dropping a new Halo Infinite or Forza, whatever. I, I think you're going to be fine. Uh, don't don't try to do some scummy crap like, you know, cheating to raise your price again. Don't do not do that. I, well, I hope luckily, you hear me, Xbox. L luckily, they immediately retracted that, and they listened to the fan base, and the people were outraged. Yeah, absolutely outraged. outraged. I mean, I, I honestly, I tweeted about it. I loved seeing that so many people that were Xbox fans were like, nah, man, that's not okay. You know, because a lot of times in gaming, like I said, with the whole console warrior thing, you get people that just can't accept that their company could make a mistake. Like, they're just like, oh, no, nope, nope, that's perfectly acceptable. You know? So it was nice to see Xbox gamers come out like, no, that's not all right. You can't do this. Stop it. Uh, and call Microsoft for the bullshit they were trying to do. I, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Too. Saw some too. unity uh, in the gaming market. and I, was I, saw, a fan. I saw you made a post for that. Yeah. I uh, I commend everyone that uh, stood up and said, no, we're not okay with this. Whether it was a publicity stunt, uh, artificial increase to make Game Pass look more valuable or whatnot. I love that everyone said, no, don't do that. We won't allow it. You know, and it, it made no sense anyway. Like, you're, you're talking about making xbox more expensive to get into like it's almost and especially i don't know if you read the press release but it was like people like me that already have xbox live it wasn't going to affect us we were like grandfathered in so it was only new people so essentially what you were saying with that move was hey if you don't have an xbox already don't freaking buy one <laughs> agreed it's, well it's weird that that just that makes no sense why would you like you want people to buy it. You want people investing. It was just a stupid move. I'm so happy they called back on it. Uh, but they did call back on it, so we just wasted, I don't know, three minutes talking about it, and we shouldn't have. It's not, <laughs> it's not a waste. It, it was big news. It, it was it was breaking the internet that day. It, it's absolutely not a waste of time. It, it still should be talked about because it, it was still, it raised a lot of attention, and it's positive to see a game company retract. I mean, we got yeah, accountability. Bro. Can... Accountability is absolutely important you got to give accountability credit where it's due absolutely so yeah. I, don't, I don't think that was a waste absolutely not but uh also we've got i'll breeze over this one but there is a rumor that microsoft has come out to uh you know their internal studios and said they are shopping for another bethesda level purchase there's a lot of rumors uh, running people were like oh they're buying take two they're buying ea they're buying square enix they're buying sega well, first off, Bethesda level means a take two is off the table. That's actually a much bigger purchase than Bethesda. Uh, I mean, Rockstar alone could probably warrant half of what Bethesda was worth. Not to say that right. Bethesda's bad, but they have the most successful game of all time. Uh, you, you can't understate that the Grand Theft Auto games will outsell everything else. Um, Absolutely. I don't know. I think... Saying Bethesda level, like Square Enix, makes sense, but they have too good of a working relationship with Japanese companies. I don't know if they would do it. Uh, not to say that they won't. I don't know that for certain. I just I don't know that they would. Um, some people have said Sega, and there is a, apparently a situation going on with Sega where Sega and the company they're part of, Sega Sammy, are like splitting their game division in two. 
And some people think that maybe it's because half of it's being sold to Microsoft. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't tell you that that's happening. I can't tell you that it's not. I can tell you that I'd like it if they bought Sega and brought in, you know, Sonic to the Xbox Fold and gave Microsoft, like, an actual mascot to use. Uh, yeah, we... we... Yeah, we're both, we're both Sega guys. I know Sonic Adventure 2 is your, like, all-time, you know, favorite Sonic title. Without a doubt. And uh, I would love to see Sonic make a comeback. And with the money that Microsoft has and the way that it's handled recently, you know, other developers just not, you know, forcing you to do what they want, but kind of just saying, hey, we're the bank. We're going to pay. You're going to make what you want. And we're both going to get rich off of it. I'd love to see what happens if they were to purchase Sega and bring in those studios. Well, and, and we talked about this and how Microsoft buying Sega could just be such a major thing because we, we talked about, I, I talked to you about what I felt like made Sonic games kind of fall off. And it's the fact that I feel like games since Sonic Adventure 2 have really failed to captivate Sonic speed. I, I feel like we're just kind of running around slower than Sonic was and we're at better technology. Absolutely. And with our new hard drives loading so fast that we can stream in worlds a hundred times faster than we used to, I would absolutely love to see what they can do with uh, with a Sonic game where they really focused on speed. Right. And I remember we talked about this and I remember being like, you know, I thought I thought to Ratchet and Clank instantly for some reason. And not so much for the yeah, graphics. Yeah, with the style, instant loading. But the like, yeah, like, world, like imagine being jumps. Sonic and you just start running and you know you get this fast blue speed and you just run right into another world no wait no load time that will captivate the speed of sonic the hedgehog oh, and that's absolutely. what we need to see absolutely i'd, I'd be all over that uh, another so. thing that kind of goes to this you know microsoft has had a very good working relationship with sega uh in like the last few months they got all of the yakuza games uh they yep. got yakuza like a dragon exclusive to series x for a few months uh as far as the next gen versions are like you can get it on ps4 but there is no ps5 version yet i think it comes out uh in march and so i mean maybe that would be another thing to lean towards yes they are indeed going to get you know um sega as an exclusive partner or a purchase uh but another one that makes sense also is ubisoft uh you know yeah. there's rumors of ubisoft connect coming to game pass ubisoft would be somewhere in that uh valuation you know, that Bethesda area. Um, they have a lot of very successful games. You know, the Tom Clancy titles, the Rabbids titles. Uh, just, there, there's a lot that they do. Assassin's Creed, whatnot. So, I think that's a solid purchase. I Right now, it's just a rumor that Microsoft's even looking. I told you on this podcast a while ago that all these companies are looking. It, it's going to be nonstop. Everyone's looking for purchases, uh, for poaching, you know, good developers for all different types of deals because we've got Amazon and, you know, now Google's backing out, but Amazon and Tencent are definitely going to be fighting this cloud battle. They want to reach the 3 billion gamers that are in the world, and uh, they're willing. Like, there is talk right now that Amazon might be discussing a purchase of Take-Two, and they are a company that's big enough to say, hey, Microsoft, you can't outbid us. So that's going to be interesting if that happens. And I mean, you know... I think, you know, a lot of companies are trying to buy other gaming companies and you're, you're seeing it. And I mean, how often do you see Nintendo buy, you know, a company like that? They're, they're more of their own thing. And they went out and bought next level games. Yeah. I, I mean, maybe maybe they were in fear that somebody could have scooped up next level games real quick from them. Well, you know, you got to look at the market. The, the truth is, like, for most of my time as a gaming fan, there weren't major studio acquisitions in gaming. That was very rare. Uh Actually, now that I say Rare, that was the big one. Back when Xbox yeah. bought Rare <laughs> 20 years ago for, you know, just shy of $400 million, that was such a big deal. Like, now we're seeing $8 billion purchases. We're seeing Microsoft buy Bethesda the year after they bought, like, five different studios. We're seeing Sony buy uh, Insomniac. We're seeing studios uh, split up and, mer like, broken into multiple teams with, you know, more uh, developers hired in. It, it's clear that this is not going to be something that goes away anytime soon. Uh, I think, that, yes, we're going to see Microsoft make another major purchase. I think we're going to see uh, Sony make purchases. And, yeah, Nintendo's going to have a couple more, too. It, it's just, it's how the market's about to go because everyone's nervous that someone like Amazon could come in and buy, like, Sega and say, hey, the only way you can play Sega games 
is on our platform. You can't get them on anything else now. You right. Know, and that's actually a perfect segue to my next thing I'll bring up real quick. Uh, I well, know. Real quick, real quick. Oh, all right. What do you got? I, I, real quick, I do just want to ask you a question because I haven't asked you this. Um, if, if you were to see Microsoft purchase one of those companies, who, who would be your most interested company for you personally? I mean... Because I know Ubisoft and Sega were too highly talked about for you. I don't know even out of those me, two who Me would personally, I'd be thrilled with the Square Enix purchase because they make some of the best yeah. RPG games I've ever played. Uh, those are some of my favorite games ever. But like the child in me probably says Sega. I'd love to see... Uh, you know, Sonic make a real comeback, along with a bunch of other Sega properties, you know. I, I really wish that someone would make a new Crazy Taxi. That, Yo, that, that was oh, one wow. of my favorite games back in the day, man. I'd kill for a new one. That's how I feel about the Simpsons Hit and Run remastered, but I don't know about seeing it. But, you know, it's interesting that you say Square, because could you imagine if the tables turned, and now all of a sudden Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy were Xbox exclusives? Uh, no, I mean, that would be huge, but I also don't believe that would be the case. I think that Microsoft plans to put their games in the Game Pass on the cloud and get it on as many devices as possible. I do think we will see Game Pass come to, like, the PlayStation in some form, come to the Switch in some form. And so even if they did buy these companies, ooh, you lost 64 cells in that. But even if they, right. even if they <laughs> did buy these companies, I think we would still see these games in other areas. Uh... And if not, Game Pass gets it to my phone, my tablet. I think we're going to see TVs with Game Pass, so uh, you'd get it regardless. But yeah, that would be big. Um, but going back to uh, you know games going multi-platform uh, and whatnot, we will bring up a yeah. uh, little bit of MLB The Show, right? Let me yeah. pop yeah. the logo down. So this is the little trailer they showed. I'm just going to uh, loop it so it'll run back through again. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I took our logo down because I threw on a picture of the game, which looks so crazy to see the Xbox One box art with MLB The Show. And if you look here, the PlayStation logo is on the front of an Xbox One game. That's crazy. Oh, but I did not to notice see the, that. Not only is a PlayStation Studios game coming to uh, Xbox, and by the way, not the Switch. Uh, I know, and that know, was rumored. There heavy. was some rumor that it, there was going to be a Switch version, and it doesn't look like that's the case. Well, first so. of all, this this game was rumored to hit Xbox and Switch last year for MLB The Show 20. Uh, so, it no, it, it was announced last year that their new deal required it to go multi-platform. And then there were people hoping that that meant we would get a pretty quick port of 20. I thought back then we weren't going to get 20 ported. Right, uh, I honestly didn't. thought we weren't going to get 21 right away. I thought that it would be like it comes out on PlayStation and then a month or two months later it comes out on Xbox. But instead, you can see the tweet from Sony here on the screen. MLB The Show launches day and date, PS4 and PS5, with cross-platform play on Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S. Oh, I so, didn't know there was cross-play, too. Yeah, like, it's going to be cross-play, too. That is such a big deal. I I can't be happier than when I see cross-play, especially on a game like this. Like Sony could have said, no, you know what, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that our version is best. We don't want you playing with us. You know, This contract says we have to release it over there, but that's it. But they didn't. Uh, they said, all right, here you go. This is just huge for Microsoft, to be honest with you. This is huge for gaming. Um, for huge gaming for gaming in general. in general. I agree. Um, what's what's really impressive to me, though, is... I, I mean, listen, I, I'm even a bigger baseball fan than you. You're not really a big baseball fan. I like baseball a lot. I'm a big Mets fan. Uh, for people that don't know, I like all Philadelphia sports except for the New York Mets. My grandfather was a huge Mets fan, so... That's one team I just can't switch to Philadelphia. It's ironic because the Phillies and Mets are rivals. But, um, I mean, yo, what, what's the first game you ever saw me play on Xbox? Let's see if you remember this. Oh, uh, the uh, the weird little baseball game. Um, Super... Super Mega Baseball. Yeah, Super Mega Baseball. <laughs> I yeah. had some good times with it. It was, like a, it was like a modern take on backyard baseball. But, I mean, that was really the baseball game you had on xbox you didn't have anything besides it was either super mega baseball well, now you're or gonna have the show the show which by the way if you're if you're i mean it's either that or 2k for the best sports game um almost every year for the last couple of years mlb the show constantly makes a great game and microsoft owners should be very very happy that this is coming and absolutely i i, I hope we do see it come to the switch eventually but i don't think the switch can handle it the uh, show I takes agree. pride in 
I agree. It, it's a really intense game visually. Uh, I don't think the Switch could run it. I, I think, I don't you know, the early reports I saw was that it would likely come to Switch. I'm thinking that they probably tried and said, you know what, we have to cut this game back way too far to make it worth it. You know what else I feel like that happened with, to be honest with you, is Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Do you remember early yeah. on when they were showing the, the demo? Yeah, the uh, the data mine where they found the Switch controls. Right, in the Tony, and that was real. That, that was 100% real. And we haven't heard a thing it fell off the market entirely so i I don't think you're going to be able to see the switch in the state it's in run any big name sports games that includes madden nhl mlb i'm shocked they even got nba 2k on there and i think they're starting to see that uh 2k just kind of gets no it's just getting uh worse every year i don't even know how i got that achievement on dead cells that just popped up kill somebody with an elevator i don't think i killed anything there but okay yeah i wish mine would (laughs) just give me achievements that i didn't actually (laughs) achieve free achievements yeah no but mlb the show on xbox i mean that's i'm, I'm happy for with crossplay but let me t- let me tell you who's gonna love that one is aqua he is a huge baseball fan he pitched through um high school middle school he even went to college for a little bit to play baseball actually oh wow yeah um he was a phenomenal pitcher uh there wasn't many that i, I think he was throwing 70 80 miles per hour in high school so i mean he was his brother's also a phenomenal catcher. So they both love baseball. They both love Xbox. There's a lot of people I know that love baseball that are on the Xbox specifically. So, Well, good for them. They're about to get a show. So enjoy, yeah, guys. It's, it's going to be a show. Day and date. <laughs> and it's got the... Uh, day and date. And it's got the cross-play with the PlayStation. That's... I, I You couldn't ask for anything more. That's like they just gave you everything you've been wanting for a long time. And that's yeah, awesome. That's... Uh, all right. Wrapping up Xbox, uh, you know that game, The Medium, came out. So we talked about this before. It's that dual reality uh, game that's... It's weird because, like, about 30% of the game has two worlds displayed at the same time. All right, It's not like just switching back and forth between them. You're literally moving in both of them together. Uh, You know, like, the left screen is the real world and the right screen is the uh, spirit world. And, first off, a lot of people seem a little bit confused about what that means. Uh, I see people online like, yo, we've been seeing split screen in video games for, like, ever. So, you know, why are you acting like this is special? Uh, This dual reality is not the same thing as split screen. Alright? Split screen renders the world once and creates two different viewpoints with controls. Alright? That's not the same thing as rendering two separate worlds at the same time. Um, I'm not going to talk about the game itself because I didn't really play it yet. I did install it. I'm going to play it sometime soon, I hope. But I just wanted to point out that uh, people question if Game Pass is sustainable for people. If, if you can really make your money on it. And the medium, despite launching on Game Pass, they reported that on day one of release, they made enough money to cover all of its development costs. So we can stop that discussion about whether or not uh, being on Game Pass makes it so your game's not profitable. The answer is no. I was so pissed at that moment. Oh, I'm sure you were. Have you ever grabbed one of the cursed chests in this game? No. You get all right. So here's how the cursed chest works. You get one of the highest tier items in the game. It's a random tier item, and you get one of those scrolls that increase your health. Right. Right. But you have to kill ten enemies, and you have this curse on you. If you get hit once, you die. All right. So you ha- you have to you have to kill ten enemies. So it becomes the Katana split. Zero. Right, and uh, obviously I took a little hit there because of course I had one of those uh, dummies that protect all the enemies right there. <laughs> yeah, but... that would make me upset. This but game's awesome Xbox... though. Actually, right when we wrap this up, I'm probably gonna turn it back on, play a little. I don't blame you. I do not blame you. This was the good run I had, too. But Mm -hmm. Xbox has so many great things going on right now. And speaking of Xbox, I do want to announce I'm going to do a little giveaway, something special. Uh, I'm going to do, well, it's going to be like a double giveaway kind of deal. So it's going to be like one week we're going to do a month of uh, Game Pass Ultimate and then another one, Game Pass Ultimate. Uh, 
for multiple reasons. First of all, I want people to start expanding their game horizons a little bit. Which um, Game Pass and, makes so easy and convenient to do. And I, I want to see some people get on Dead Cells. I want to see more people supporting this game. This game is phenomenal. Um, games like Ori, games like Dead Cells, games like Monster Hunter World, these are all free through a subscription service that you pay for. I mean, free when you have the service. And it's us it's the best service in gaming. We we Absolutely. reiterate that so many times. You know, and and, um, and people that's coming from my Nintendo guy. So it, it is, <laughs> and it truly is. And Nintendo doesn't have a deal that's even close to it, by the way, but I, listen, I'm not afraid to... It, Nintendo's my favorite console, you know that. And I, I will say the Switch is my favorite console of all time officially. Probably since last year. You know, I didn't want to jump on that wagon immediately, but just what the Switch can do for my style of gaming, it's just everything I could have ever asked for in a console. I mean, you know, before this, my favorite console was probably the Game Boy Advance series, the SP. I mean, my... My first memory of gaming is always, you know, Pokemon Snap, Pokemon Blue. But the prime of my gaming is when I had that Red Flip Game Boy Advance SP and Pokemon Ruby. And there wasn't anything like the it. The good old days. I, I mean, the jump from the Game Boy Advance. And even the SP was just so comfortable in your hands. And I just felt like a lot of people had it. And the good old days, like you said. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh... I don't know, I'd probably say PS2 is my favorite system of all time. And I don't blame you, it's a lot of people's for a good reason, yeah. I and mean, a great reason. I mean, it, it, it had every genre covered, That it was amazing. Loved it. I just always liked the handheld aspect, though, personally. That was always my thing. I liked being able to bring my games on the go. Oh, I'm going to my buddies. You know, my mom didn't want me bringing the PlayStation out. She didn't want me bringing... The only console I really had some leeway bringing out was uh, the GameCube. Just yeah, it had a handle. Yeah, it had a handle. It was. I do want to. Uh, I do want to say on that though, you know, with stuff like XCloud, as we get further and further into this cloud gaming platform that we're seeing, it's going to, you know, give you the ability to have the super high end console experience or even PC experience, and take it with you, via your phone. That could end up being a knock on whatever future Switch comes. That if it's not powerful enough, it's not going to live up to competitors doing a similar thing through the internet. Um, and to a degree, I I, I do absolutely a hundred percent agree with you on that. It's going to make a difference. But one thing again, Nintendo does so great is they have a lot of games that adapt offline. And I I, I mean, for some people, that's rare. For me, offline gaming is a little bit critical. We both know why. We're not going to say why, but offline gaming is critical. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. But, I, I mean, yeah, it, it absolutely is going to make a difference with this uh, cloud gaming services, and we're going to have to see. I mean, listen, here's here, the Switch. Actually, the Switch Pro was touched on. I don't know if you saw the article on that, but with uh, Nintendo talking about their quarterly sales and everything like that, they did talk about the Switch Pro, and they said they have no plans for a Nintendo Switch Pro suit. You know Nintendo always that, leaving soon out there. Like, that, yeah, I mean, that, however, that's one of those backward statements that doesn't actually say anything. They did. They did, however, refuse to deny that a Switch Pro is planned for 2021. I it, it call me crazy, but at this point, I know we were talking March, April. I I think you would be seeing more like an October, November release for the Switch Pro. I it just, might. I just, I I don't like that. I don't. Soon I don't want that. I don't it, want it, it to be that way. A thousand things. So it's it's a way of saying something without saying anything. No, I agree. Oh. Um, but you know it, it's tough with eighty million console sales within the time it's been alive. Um, it, it, you know they're not really on a thing where they have to pick up their sales or rush anything to get out on the market. Uh, uh I mean you know I'm I'm getting ready to wrap this up, but like on that note. Just because they're selling well doesn't mean that they're not in a rush to get the new stuff out like you have to be ready to adapt to a market before the adaption uh, adaptation needs to be made that's that's how it really works and if you're just like oh no we're gonna wait until the system stops selling well to plan a successor you're not gonna have a good time Th that is absolutely gonna be like destruction for your company so they need to be looking now at 
is the Switch going to be selling in 18 months? Because you don't develop a Switch Pro or, you know, a Switch 2 or a PS6 or Xbox, whatever they call the next one. I'm very confused on that. You don't develop those quick. That's like two to three years in development. So if they're not, like, ready to launch a Switch by the end of this year or early next year in their plans right now, then they are going to fall grossly behind at some point. So don't, don't just be like, oh, well, it's selling well right now. The Wii was selling well, too. And then their next system sold 14 million systems. It's one of the worst-selling consoles of all time. I know, it, and it really is. And that's why they said the Switch was make or break. And Reggie Fees actually came out and said that himself, that when Nintendo was talking about the Switch, that was make or break. Like, could you imagine if the Switch wasn't successful? What, what would have happened? Like, that company's just, too valuable. They would have just kept going. Don't let them lie. They're liars. I mean... <laughs> I mean, here's the thing is, why? what benefit would Reggie have from lying? He doesn't even work for Nintendo of America anymore. Oh, he has no I mean, part the, of that The benefit anymore. he has he, now is not... press. The benefit he has now is it gets him in the news. Well, keep in mind, too, that he also um, works with GameStop. So, I mean, that is still in the gaming world remotely, of course. But uh, you know, with that, we're at an hour and 41, so I think we're solid to cut this out. Uh, yeah. I think we had a pretty good week this week. A lot of news. Hopefully we have a lot more news for the next show. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll probably start it with uh, Apex Legends hitting the Switch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hope, because otherwise I'm going to have to you know, take applications to replace you because you were wrong. <laughs> well... Real quick, they actually uh, there is server maintenance planned for uh, twelve in the morning till one. Well, there in the should be. We already know that the new season's coming. Just are we right. getting Switch version? I don't know. I'm saying there's there's maintenance planned for the Switch servers at midnight till one in the morning. So maybe they're getting that ready. But <laughs> you'll be calling see. me in like two hours. I'm on Apex. Yeah, right. Get on. Get on. <laughs> nice. All right, man. With that, Red Cloud Gamer signing off. See you guys next time.